Hey, welcome to our Atlas Live event. Um, today we're going to be talking about the standard model uh, in this uh, Atlas Facebook Live. Uh, my name is Clara Nellist. Uh, I work on uh, the Atlas experiment um, on uh, mostly studying the Higgs boson, so when it changes into tau particles and also when it's created from top quarks. Okay. Uh, my name is Ludovica Periobella. I'm a CERN fellow. So I'm working for CERN for the Atlas experiment. I'm now mostly working for uh, standard model measurements and particular very precise standard model measurements, always in Atlas. Yeah. So yeah. I should also mention I'm uh, with Göttingen at uh, Germany, but I'm originally from the UK. Okay, cool. Okay. And uh, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you could start and explain a bit about what the standard model is sure. to get us started. Okay, yes. So uh, standard model is the theory that actually describe uh, uh, the, all the phenomena in particle physics that we are producing, so the, all the collisions that we are producing at the LAC made out some final states that are well explained up to now by the standard model, which is very general theory that help us to, uh, to see, really study in particular what we are seeing. And uh, it's quite complex. And recently, so in 2012, we managed to find the last missing pieces, which mm -hmm. was uh, the Higgs boson, as uh, you very well know. Yeah, so the, the particles that we have in the standard model, um, the, the ones that uh, are possibly more well known, uh, we have the up quark, the down quark, which make up the proton and neutron, sure. uh, and then we also have the electron. Yes, um, electrons, and then we have uh, a cousin of electron, which is a bit uh, similar to electron, but a bit more heavy, which is the muons, and then we have the tau, which is uh, another <laughs> another cousin, but really more heavy, which, does, uh, which has also some... Uh, strange uh, feature, yeah. at least in the experiment. And those are uh, very important because this, those leptons are uh, um, the object that we use to calibrate our detector. So they uh, are very important for our day-by-day -day work because mm -hmm. otherwise we couldn't, uh, without uh, knowing how those particles interact with the detector, we couldn't have done any measurements. Mm -hmm. And so the these ones, as well as ne the neutrinos, we call them the fermions. Yes. And then we also have the force carriers, which are the bosons. Yes. So for that we have, uh, for example, the Z and the W boson, which I'm studying, and I love personally. <laughs> and then uh, we do have also uh, the photons, which is uh, uh, is neutral and is uh, is the interacting, so the electromagnetic force that uh, we know also outside, uh, probably mm -hmm. Atlas. And then we have more complicated stuff, like, uh, for example, the gluons, which mm -hmm. are a bit more QCD, a bit more so another part of standard model, which is a bit less. Uh, uh, user-friendly, <laughs> And so you're working on the, the W boson? I'm, yes, I'm currently working in W boson measurements mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, as you probably know, we recently published a beautiful measurement about the W mass, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, actually a great excitement. So this measurement took uh, almost five years, but uh, really worth it at the end because we reached a very, very nice precision. Uh, really competitive with the oldest experiment like uh, that were done for example in the US at Tetron. Mm -hmm. And so this was a great achievement I think for Atlas. And what did you mean to get this precision? Because the standard model has been around and as you said we added this final piece the Higgs boson but uh, some people might say that now that we've discovered them, that's it. But obviously, we have to do ah, yes, more we studies. Have to do much, much more things because there are a lot of things that are uh, still open in the standard model itself. So we really need uh, extremely high precision to understand uh, fully what is going on, and if we really understand what we are seeing. So mm -hmm. this, is, I think, is the nice thing. And uh, why W mass was so important is just because. Uh, as X boson itself can uh, give us an hint if something else outside the standard model exists. Because mm -hmm. if the W mass is not what the standard model predicts, uh, this means that there are some other forces that we don't know that uh, enter in, in, uh, in the big picture. And mm -hmm. if we don't study these particular pieces, we might lose uh, some opportunity to discover new physics. Yeah, so this is really interesting as well. So it's super interesting. But yeah. Referring to your question, what we need to mm -hmm. do a super precise measurement, I think that one of the basic things is really to understand our detector. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, one, of, one part of my work that I really love is uh, performance work. So studying really the performance of our detector, understand how our detector responds to particles that go through. And mm -hmm. I think this is a, was a crucial and crucial piece for, for getting so, so nice results. And we have many people in the collaboration that do these ah, yes, studies. Yes, absolutely. This is a, a universal and fundamental. Mm -hmm. right? But I think also for the Higgs boson, this yeah. is very important. Mm -hmm. 
We also, so we also need the Monte Carlo studies, so these are the simulation tools yes. that we have. And those are very important to actually uh, have uh, uh, some simulations, so we try, we, we try to simulate what the standard model as a theory uh, is, uh, is telling them within the detector, so how the things that standard model predicts look like inside our detector, so those are very important tools. And then this is how we see whether or not what we expect to see is, exactly, is what we find. Yes, yeah. so for example, the nice picture of Higgs bosons that uh, with the month times there is a standard model uh, prediction and then something, suddenly something else pop up in the data and this is uh, yes. Yeah. So for some of the analyses we want more data, Yeah. so we're, we're sure. waiting for more. Yes, uh, I think this is very important and really depends on the uh, cross-section, so on the probability that the process uh, mm -hmm. has to appear in a proton-proton collision, for example. So for example, for the X, I think this is uh, one of the main, uh, uh, the main point to reach a very good precision on the coupling, so mm -hmm. on the understanding, for example, how the X coupled to other particles, like for example the, bo the Z and the uh, W boson, we really need more data. Yeah. And I think this is very important. Yeah, because some of these uh, decays of the Higgs into other particles really don't happen very often. Exactly. And the ones that do happen very often, there are a lot of other background particles that make the measurement quite difficult. Yes. So we need to collect a lot of data to be able to really yes. uh, have a pure analysis region. Yes, to understand what's happened. Because then if you say, OK, for me, this process is, uh, I don't know, happens 20% of the time, but you have an uncertainty, which is big as your estimate mm -hmm. is not really. <laughs> so you, you, you want to be very precise to have an into if something else is, up, is that going on there. Mm -hmm. So you said that you published the analysis you're working on. What are the plans now for the future of the uh, for the W mass mm. measurement, so yes, we are we are planning to probably to uh, to try to to have a, a more precise, even more precise mm -hmm. uh, analysis with uh, other data. So collecting more data and uh, analyzing uh, more data. And uh, yes, and this is uh, what about the challenges? Because uh, so the LHC, when it gets upgraded, will be providing us with more collisions yes, per second. Yes, and so this means more pileups or more noises actually. Yeah. So yes, the challenge, I think very important things to uh, to face those challenges are of course the upgrade detectors. Mm -hmm. So I think upgrading the detector is one of the fundamental things that we need to go on with our physics program and continuing studying whatever we are studying because if we don't have improved, if we cannot improve our tools, I don't think that we can do as good as we, we are doing now. Yeah. yeah. But of course, with uh, more luminosity, then we can do the Higgs studies. Yes, we can do much much more precise Higgs studies, and why not find some hint of something different? Mm. Yeah, I think. Because, uh, for example, right now, with the increase of uh, cross, so of uh, center of mass energy, because mm -hmm. we're running at 13 TV, for example, the uh, Higgs, uh, uh, which is produced through a TT bar, uh, uh, channel is uh, so this is when two top quarks yes, uh, create a Higgs boson. Yeah. This boson. This is uh, uh, so the cross section. So the probability that this happens is four times bigger than what we had before. So this is a great, uh, a good opportunity for to study this uh, these things very precisely. Yeah. So yeah. this is one of the biggest. Uh, yes. The, the yeah. not challenges, yeah, but, but uh, yes, the goal. I mean, goals, we need yeah. to, to, to to do these measurements. Yes, yeah. Uh, I agree. And if you can't pick the W boson, what's your favorite standard the model Z, particle? The, the Z. Z. Yeah, <laughs> I love the Z. Well. So I would, I would, I, I want to say that if we, so in the really in the future, whenever we had the, a great amount of data, X can be a standard candle like the Z, mm -hmm. but just a higher energy. So what do you mean by standard candle? Standard candle means that we can. Okay, we know it very well, mm -hmm. so we know how our detector responds to the decays of disease, and so we can play and calibrate the detector, study very precisely what's happening, uh, learning how really very detailed the particle decays and what is the, are really the, uh, the final states, etc. So this is kind of stand the standard candle, in principle right now our standard candle are disease. Mm -hmm. So we have millions of these, so we look at them, we understand them, and we calibrate our detector with them, and why not in the future we can use the X to do the same, and so hopefully use the X to be a standard candle of something else that uh, <laughs> we'll hopefully discover. Because one of the next uh, aims is to use the Higgs boson to see if there are other, for example, <laughs> possibly supersymmetry or maybe yeah. a dark matter candidate. Exactly, because I think that um, standard model is uh, a a beautiful theory, but also exploring really in detail standard model can give us really an hint on something else mm -hmm. that could happen and could be there. And uh, knowing exactly where the standard model, so our understanding of the standard model deviates from what 
the theory said is a key point to look really specific uh, deviation, like for example with new particle, etc. Yeah, so as you were saying with the coupling, so we're looking at how the Higgs boson changes into other particles yes. and how often it's happening and if it's not happening at the rate we're expecting then this is the, the sign for new physics exactly. that we're looking for. Yes, and, uh, and also study precisely which kind of coupling, so which rates are modifying, we can also understand the nature of the new physics, so this is very, very powerful, this is a very powerful tool indeed. So it's so my, my favorite particle uh, is the tau. Um, so I've been studying um, when the, the Higgs boson changes into tau particles. Um, and these are leptons. Um, and as the Higgs prefers to decay to heavier particles, um, taus are the heaviest leptons we have. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been studying this channel. And my, my sub-channel within this uh, is uh, when one of the taus decays hadronically. So this means it makes a jet of particles. Um, which happens very often, mm. but then one of the other tails changes into a, a lighter lepton. Okay. Um, so we get a nice muon or electron uh, signature. And this helps you to reconstruct the final states and... Yeah, so and we, we can cut out the background because okay. there's a lot of uh, background with the tails and jets okay. and particles. And so this is very peculiar, so the Higgs that uh, really coupled with the leptons is very good also for the understanding of, uh, of yeah. the Higgs field itself. So it's the first time that we saw uh, Higgs uh, turning into fermions and it's the only time we've seen it so far uh, turning into leptons. Okay. Um, so we are also studying Higgs turning into muons but this is, is, happens at a much lower rate. Yeah. Um, so even though it's a very very clean signature when Higgs turns to muons it's really nice we, we have to wait for more data. Sure and this um, is uh, we will see it uh, yeah. eventually. Yeah. So hopefully with the, the high luminosity when we get more data we can also see that, that okay. channel. Okay, so I think uh, we're going we're gonna to finish here. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, we hope that you have enjoyed our other videos or that you'll check out um, our other live events today. If you have any questions, then uh, please send them in on our Facebook page. And we have a live event at the end of today um, where somebody will be answering your questions. So please send them in. Uh, send them with the hashtag uh, Atlas25. Let us know uh, if you enjoyed the videos. And uh, yeah, we hope to hear from you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.